Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you guys set the timer for 25 minutes so that I know my time? Because right now it's not. Um, we have been given 25 minutes because of time, so we don't have a lot to do. So I'd just like to start off by asking all of you if the regulator is a friend or a foe. I'll start with you, Eric. Great. Um, thank you so much, Carol, for that question. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, for us at Bionet, we see the regulator as a friend. Uh, they form a fundamental baseline for us to continuously look out to um, in regards to safety, quality, and ethical standards. So for us, we continue to see them as a friend. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning. I don't know where we are. Um, I generally also think it's a friend. Um, because we are in a, in a in a business which carries a lot of responsibility. And I think this responsibility dealing with financial inclusion, protection, etc., needs a framework. And I must say, especially here in Kenya and talking about InsurTech today, um, the regulator has been very um, supportive and understanding about the need of technology and and also about the right uh, how to use technology in the right way. So definitely, he and Kenya also a friend. <laughs> uh, my my views are uh, quite same, but I see them as a guardian actually. Okay, more like a guardian uh, of where they are as a friend as well, but uh, they help uh, companies as well as the consumer rights. Okay, at the same time, they protect both of them. Uh, role is quite crucial and important to uh, view the uh, both sides. Okay, not just uh, from the insurance company's perspective, but from the consumer perspective as well. And uh, taking the right initiatives and giving the right insights to the companies uh, that what shall be done. I, I do see them as a guardian more than just a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to say an appropriate ally. And one reason being is that uh, we're just in the season of renewing our licenses. So I don't think I want to say otherwise. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the regulator here in the market, I have seen the last couple of years being very proactive in ensuring the ecosystem remains uh, viable for market players. And you know, I have to say in like the 4.7 years I've been at CIO and moderated, no one ever wants to say that regulator is not a friend. <laughs> Everybody's always playing it safe. And sometimes I wonder, I oscillate between friend or foe. So today I'm thinking it's a friend uh, because the regulator protects the consumer, protects the market, mitigates risks, and they build a framework because we do need that. We are law-abiding citizens, I should hope. And we are law-abiding businesses, I should hope. You know, and they shape the industry standards. They basically do a lot. So it makes sense why the regulator would be a friend. So I'll start with you, Eric, with uh, Bionate. Bionate? Bionate. Bionate. Okay. Bionate are um, um, health partners at DX5, so I am biased. But um, you have to have a lot of partnerships. Like, you can't do what you do without creating them. So what are some of the partnerships you have found are necessary and how have those partnerships roped in the regulator? Um, yeah, very important question. Um, so a little bit of a background about Bionate. Um, as some of the people in the room might know, we are a digital health company, um, essentially digitizing the healthcare journey for patients um, in Kenya and hopefully very soon in Africa as well. Um, so in regards to the partnerships that have led us to truly understand uh, the regulatory um, landscape, those have been largely driven by our insurance partners. And some of them, I'm really glad to see some of them here in the room today, for example, Jubilee, um, Britam, and a few others who've um, provided us with sort of historical um, insights in regards to how they've been operating in that particular environment and how solutions like ours can aid in their continuous innovation across uh, that particular landscape as well. Um, at Bionate, what we essentially try to do is to work with these particular partners, not independently, because we've already found out that 
you know, you can't work alone within that particular space. Um, it's to work with them to reimagine what the existing offerings that are there out there in the market uh, could look like with the insertion of technology, like the ones we've developed at Bionit. Um, and that's exactly how we've managed. Um, we have to learn from them. We have to continually um, figure out, uh, you know, what is within and what is without, what needs to be, what needs engagement with the regulator. And more often than not, you find that, um, you know, through these particular partnerships that we have with this, uh, with most of our underwriting partners or insurance partners, we are able to discover um, what are the limits that we can go uh, of how far can we stretch out uh, the offerings that are currently there. On, or how can we reimagine them as well? And that's exactly how we've been able, that has been our experience and that's how we've been able to, you know, navigate that particular landscape uh, through the uh, partnership with uh, insurance partners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a team dedicated to this or it's just you? Uh, we do have a team. Uh, yes, I, I, I am the team uh, and a few others. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bente, how can technology be leveraged to streamline the regulatory compliance for insure tech is technology also a friend yeah i think technology is always a friend okay. isn't it especially in 2024 and maybe just to add on to your previous question i think it is less about is the regulator a friend or or not i think the biggest challenge regulation is having is that sometimes technology is quicker than regulation and that is i think what every insure tech whether it's on the panel or in the room or in any other industry is struggling with, right? That sometimes we are quicker than the regulator. And, and I think there's a couple of people, especially here in Kenya, who do a fantastic job to lobby mm -hmm. that regulation is um, keeping the pace of tech. And, and I think this is also where insurance in general has to really pick up because our decision-making processes, and that's a message to all the underwriter here in the rooms, are taking too long. <laughs> yeah, um, I, had a, I had an incident the other day that an underwriter came back on our SaaS offering after like, like a year, nine months, 12 months, right? And I said, okay, which version do you want? Do you want the version which we actually offer to you or do you want the version... 3.6, yeah. you know, just for a picture, let speaking. So maybe, maybe that isn't. Um, but I think in general, technology can help, I mean, speaking about that, to, you know, identify the regulations, you know, for every player much quicker, access the risk, and then also measure the impact on the industries. Um, just yesterday, the brokerages were also here in Kenya, hit um, by some reporting um, requirements and this is really where technology can come in and sort that very quickly. So I think in 2024 um, regulation and tech have to go hand in hand and and yeah do this identification assessment and then also obviously acting on regulations in time and promptly. So 100% hand in hand. Ovan, what about you? Are you handicapped by innovating around software? When it comes to designing what insurtex need, do you have to also partner with a regulator from the beginning and embed it in your design process? Uh, there are, uh, fortunately, like uh, now regulators are uh, uh, matching up uh, with all the insights that they get from industry and they are taking the measures about uh, the technological transformations that are happening. But uh, yes, many times uh, challenges do come where we see that uh, the policies and frameworks that are there, there are a lot of gaps, okay? And uh, many times we need to report to the regulator as well that, you know, this is something that you will need to take care of, otherwise tomorrow there will be problems. We design solutions keeping in mind that whatever regulatory frameworks are there, they shall be uh, taken care, uh, but if not, then what shall be the next step? Many times uh, companies do find the gap and uh, take leverage of it, okay? May not be very, uh, very good for the consumers many times this is very good for the consumer so uh, this is something that uh, we as a technology company uh, need to take care and we always take care of that uh, whatever we are doing and we are implementing for the insurance companies or be it for aggregators or brokers anyone okay that's all comply the uh, the guidelines that are given 
uh, but it is job for the regulators as well. So transformation, digital transformation that we talk, it is not just for the insurance companies or you know the the companies or the uh, consumers. Equally, it is important for the uh, insurance regulatory. They need to match up to the level. Otherwise, you know the, these companies and uh, digital transformation for them will go uh, 100 miles ahead and uh, regulators will be sitting and building up the frameworks and policies that are uh, not as per the you know today's need so i believe that uh, it shall go hand in hand and uh, we do try wherever basically we find any uh, compliances that regulator has to uh, come in picture and they must take care okay yeah and finally frank when Traditional insurance companies collaborate with digital techs, which they should. It should be encouraged. How do they handle regulatory challenges? Because the insurance techs have a specific, unique set of dilemmas, and traditional insurance have other issues. But when you collaborate, it's like you create a whole new entity. How do you manage that? I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, insurtechs, especially in the African markets, uh, go through is a problem of uh, you know, information asymmetry. What, uh, what the insurers know and what the insurtechs know uh, doesn't seem to have a convergence. However, I, th I seem to think that one of the biggest uh, solutions to such kind of a problem, and I would, I would imagine that uh, for most insurtechs, the biggest problem for them innovating fast is the ecosystem, where the ecosystem seems to be not developing as fast as they would want it to be. So I, I think regulators need to be at the forefront, and especially from a simple uh, step of creating a test environment for products, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, you know, innovative sandboxes where both insurtechs, insurers and regulators can meet perhaps and have a test environment to be able to define the parameters of how products will function. Because one of the things I see, especially in the Kenyan market, even from the product level, innovation seems to be uh, very slow. Yeah? Uh, I still remember that uh, when, uh, when electric cars hit the Kenyan market, most insurers did not have a provision for them because the only thing that showed up in their policies was diesel-powered engines, you know? Uh, so they had to innov innovate, but that took a bit of time. So I would say the, the insurtechs have the agility of innovation. The insurers have the advantage of uh, uh, over a long period of time, they have faced compliance issues, they have done uh, progressive development. And the regulator, on the other hand, uh, presents uh, an opportunity for these two players to offer them a proper market for them to play under. So I think... No one can operate in a silo on their own side. There needs to be collaborative, and I, and I, and, and I, and I th th thankfully, uh, well, like Bente is doing uh, fast innovation, but that fast innovation is going to be slowed down if the ecosystem is not developing as fast. Yeah. Yes, because you are going to be next. So I was going to ask how the landscape has evolved and how have you seen the evolution of it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe something to add there. Um, uh, Something MTech has experienced in, for example, the Rwandan market is that innovation was highly encouraged from the regulator and not just encouraged in, in, in terms of, please guys, you know, um, we need to service the end user better, simplify insurance and so on, but really uh, put a framework there that every underwriter was, for the lack of a better word, forced to, to service their end users instantly seamless and end to end yeah and that can only be done ideally through technology when you're thinking further so i think um digitalization innovation has to be really come from that point of view having said that i think in kenya we are pushing i think it is just a question of of speed but when when you're asking me how the ecosystem has evolved over the last three, five years since we are in the business, I think they have tremendous steps being done. I mean, you don't meet one underwriter in the ecosystem who's not thinking digital, right? Some are obviously quicker. We are seeing Britain here with the Beta Lab um, also really bringing up um, the very young innovators, you know, um, in, in terms of pushing solutions, bringing in international know-how, but really every underwriter is 
supporting digitalization, thinking digital, because they know this is the only way to get uh, get away, not even from the 3%, but more towards the 2% penetration up towards South African levels, which are more towards the 6 7% penetration, right? Um, on the other hand, we're also seeing other um, aggregators also, you know, bank assurance, um, and brokers, agents, amazing solutions for them to join it because it is an ecosystem. You can't just come from a product perspective, which is the underwriters. You need to take everybody on board. You need to bring, I mean, I don't know the exact number, but a huge portion of policies are still being distributed through intermediaries. If you do not digitalize them as well, um, you, you're not going to get the impact the industry and the ecosystem is looking for. Um, if you're only concentrating on the purchase part and not on the claims part like um, MTBA, et cetera, you will also not get the impact. So this, everybody here in the room, you have taken on quite a, quite a task, <laughs> right? Yeah. So. Just to go back to Rwanda, I'm stuck on Rwanda. Yeah. What is it that they're doing different that we can learn from? So there was a week, um, I think, and now the Rwanda market is obviously significantly smaller, right? We know that. Um, nearly every underwriter was reaching out to me and says, Bente, we need, basically they called you and said, we need tech. You probably know these calls, right? We need to do something on tech. And you are like on the phone, on the Zoom call, and you're like, ah, oh, now... <laughs> Where do we start, right? But there apparently has been a meeting with the regulator where they said, guys, we need to bring insurance closer to the people. How can it be that people are not having to go into a, a banking branch anymore, right? I mean, um, but insurance, even the smallest policy, travel, PA, micromedical, you know, takes like two week sales cycle. That's what we are dealing with do something. And the only way to do it, and they had a consultant, was you guys have to deploy tech. So now all the underwriters were sent home by the regulator. We want you to come with a roadmap um, of technology and digitalization in the next four weeks. And obviously, I mean, when the regulator is putting this kind of framework there, you have to comply, right? That's true. true. And, that is, and I think that pressure can only come from regulation. All um, right. Here in Kenya, we are a little bit softer in the approach, which is probably also needed because it's a bigger market, more players, etc. Having said that, we have Bima Lab, we have, um, I think Winnie is also in the room here who has been a super part of that. Uh, so there's a lot happening in a more softer approach, but from where I'm sitting at least in an approach which is really taking everybody on that journey. And I think that in the Kenyan market, that is super essential. Okay. You talked a lot about technology, but what kind of technological challenges are insurtechs facing? And how do you help them find solutions? Uh, a lot. Actually, there are a lot of gaps. I would say uh, one is uh, having the right insights. Okay, so all insurance companies do have a lot of data. They do have a lot, lot of data they have gathered since last 30, 40, 50 years. Okay. Uh, but how they utilize that data, okay? Uh, how they go to the next level from it, that is most significant thing for all of the insurance companies, underwriters, okay? Uh, it's not just about selling the insurance policies, okay? How do you serve your customers? What is your uh, claim ratios? Uh, how how uh, you are uh, doing all that under the regulatory frameworks, okay? It, it's not something that you are selling 1 million policies every year, but your claim ratio that is something very, very bad and you don't even know that what is your exact claim ratio. Okay. How many people are coming? What kind of rejections are happening? Okay. How, how you are getting, uh, if there is rejections happening, what are, you know, insights about it? There could be 10 different regions for it. Uh, are you reporting all those regions to uh, your regulator? Okay. Uh, does that data is coming in the real time? It's not something that, uh, you know, regulators are getting to know after three years or five years. Then market is in different shape. Three, four years is a big time. So uh, there are a lot of gaps that uh, regulator also need to put in uh, things, frameworks. But more important is for uh, 
insurance companies to to uh, do work on uh, these things alongside making digitalization for their customers to buy the policies okay buying policy making the penetration see insurance uh, i still see that you know many people when uh, see the insurance thing they see is a liability is is a liability kind of product okay they don't realize what uh, insurance can help them okay uh, it's not something that insurance company or the consumer shall see is a uh, push product okay they themselves shall come and they see that uh, the advantages that they are uh, getting transparency is one big uh, issue okay consumer must know what exactly they are getting from that policy what will be the benefits many times uh, that that we have seen that agents go there they sell something to them but in actually the policy was something different so having right insights for the consumer having right insights for the regulator and uh, getting the correct dynamics is quite important and these are the big challenges that uh, all of them together will need to solve all right eric i see you nodding quite a bit are these some of the challenges that you've encountered when you're trying to build your business um correct um so mindset and culture um or in regards to the insurance industry was one of one of the biggest barriers we ex we experienced while we were trying to build out our model uh, with underwriters as well uh, because when you think about how um you know policies are structured you always have um you know um the underwriter as as they keep focus a uh, focal point in regards to what that particular policy should ensure or should how it should be carried out as well however um so how we overcame these challenges is by working with underwriters using their existing offerings um and if i put it into perspective for example if you look at an insurance policy as an a4 picture uh we use the technology that we currently have to expand that into an a0 or an a1 um how can we use the same offering but in a bigger you know setup if we if for example very minute um if you have a cover that is 100000 what can we do with that 100000 by inserting you know technology to make it much more impactful um there you know uh, i know times times up however um, oh, well. <laughs> the, the 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 speaker from turaco said that one of the things that uh, the statement that he said is that you know insurance is a product that you buy but you never you hope that you'll never get to use it however having sat with insurance policies myself um there's usually how we sell insurance we sell it we sell it uh, as fear we used to say sell fear to the client and then at the end of it if this particular risk or loss does not occur now questions are emerging from these particular consumers on what is the impact of this particular policy for the last 12 year for for the last 12 months you know my car has not had an accident i have not fallen in so what have i gained from this particular policy and those are some of the hard questions that we are able to answer by thinking outside the box and ensuring that even though the loss that we anticipated and created the policy for has not happened we can still using technology innovate solutions that are adjacent for example can we have an impact on their lifestyle management can we have an impact on preventative care even though the client has not fallen ill how can we have prove impact at the end of the uh, of the policy period maybe you allow me to add one thing here i i love what you're saying right and this goes already very deep when we are thinking about usability of insurance or just the insurance topic as a whole unfortunately um and let me give you one example i just you know i'm allowed to give birth to this baby right <laughs> and i got i got a proposal from the hospital and we're going to name the hospital of my underwriter of i think 500,000 shilling for a c-section boom 3 years ago i had my first child you know what they charged when i left 1.5 million shilling so i'm looking at it as a user now as an end user and it comes back to what mtiva is doing in in terms of really and i'm sitting there wow our issues are much more on the surface Ali when you're buying a travel and they're asking us crazy questions about our kid signing the travel policy right it is not even going as deep as you know behavioral data as much as we would like to talk about it and I'm 100% with you this the surface the, the problem we're having in the industry 
is so obvious in terms of clear processes, transparency, and just doing, you know, in having a, um, you know, my investors like using the word playbook, right? I mean, how can it be that an underwriter is not shouting out and say, oh, three years ago we paid 1.5, now we are being asked to pay 500. An underwriter is asking Ali, hey, ask your children to sign your travel policy. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just making something up. I know we had that discussion. I know, I know. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me just finish up with Frank, because you made really good points about the collaboration between insurance companies and insurtechs. How would you advise them to their regulator to operate in a, and create a space where innovation is actually possible. So they don't stifle it, they encourage it. I think, I think from where I see it, it's just, it's just one thing the regulator has to do. One is um, have a more approach of the outcome more than the process. Yeah, insist on the outcome. What do you want to see happening? Because when you, when you, when you spend your time thinking about the process, you begin to stifle growth. But if you were to clearly define what you want to see in the market and allow the different players to adjust their systems and the way they, they work around your preferred outcome, then innovation becomes very easy. But um, traditionally, rules have always been uh, put with a lot of processes. And the process that sometimes does not really um, offer a, a ground for innovation. And the second thing is proactivity. Yeah, I th and I think that's uh, the biggest thing that they could do to us is is see what, where, where the market is going and begin to offer solutions and uh, parameters around where the market is going to go instead of, uh, you know, uh, sharing uh, every quarter. And I don't know the, reg the regulator is here. Do's and don'ts to the different players in the market. Define the, ink, the outcome and let the players adjust their, the way they think around what the, what the outcome should be. Yep. All right. Well, thank you all so much. We can't take your questions, unfortunately. I'd just like to clarify, the regulator was invited. The regulator was not able to attend. It would have been interesting to have them here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.